When dealing with something as critical as preterm labor, it's important to have a standardized protocol to ensure that each patient's risk of an imminent preterm delivery is assessed in a consistent and thorough way. Without a standardized protocol, it's much easier to make critical errors that can result in inappropriate treatment or the inappropriate discharge of patients who are in true preterm labor. For instance, in a recent study of over 23,000 patients with preterm labor symptoms, of the 76% discharged home, a shocking 20% had preterm delivery within three days, totaling over 3,500 patients in just this one study alone. How could this happen? The study shows that tools available to healthcare providers to assess a patient's risk of imminent preterm birth were significantly underutilized. In fact, only 4% of these inappropriately discharged patients received an FFN test during their evaluation. We can't know why all of these patients in true preterm labor were discharged. We can only assume that their clinical assessment or cervical length examinations suggested that discharge was appropriate. And that's not terribly surprising because we know that both clinical assessment and cervical length measurement can be very subjective. In fact, 52% of providers reported different dilation measurements when repeating the same simulation. And dilation and contractions in particular have very poor positive and negative predictive values, especially compared to FFN testing. Even patients who are not dilated at all, or less than one centimeter dilated, have a 16% chance of delivering in the next seven days. So simply discharging patients based on minimal dilation can be risky. And while cervical length measured via transvaginal ultrasound can provide useful information, obtaining accurate measurements can be difficult. A recent analysis of cervical length ultrasounds from large, multi-center trials showed a high rate of inaccuracy, even though these were conducted at academic medical centers by clinicians with specialized training. And that's because cervical measurement is tricky. Consider this cervical measurement image. It looks completely normal, but look what happens after the third minute on the same patient. However, when FFN is used in conjunction with transvaginal ultrasound, preterm labor risk prediction has been shown to be improved by 50% versus ultrasound alone. That's why a protocol that includes both FFN testing and transvaginal ultrasound when a clear certified sonographer is available to perform it, provides the most information. And if cervical length is not available, an FFN test result provides completely objective critical information to help make your treatment decisions. In fact, utilizing FFN testing not only reduces unnecessary admissions and interventions, it can also help reduce triage time and promote the efficient use of resources. For example, the Mayo Clinic reduced the rate of hospital admissions by 56% after incorporating FFN into their preterm labor triage protocol. Likewise, another hospital realized a 50% decrease in admissions for preterm labor with no difference in preterm births, plus a reduction in average length of stay from 5.2 days to just 0.6 days after including FFN in their preterm labor evaluation protocol. In our final video, We'll cover the many free FFN testing resources available to you at ffntest.com.